Hi, I'm Mr. Hendricks, and I will be the English teacher for your senior year. If you have either mythology and fantasy or AP literature, I'm um, just going to sort of give you a little intro to myself. Um, I'll make later, later, I will make some of these for individual classes. For right now, uh, who am I? I've taught 7th, 9th, and 11th and 12th grades at TPAA. I have credentials to teach both English and social studies, but this year I'm just teaching English. I'm going to give you a bit of a long bio, um, but there is a point at the end of it, so uh, we'll get there. So anyway, I was born in San Pedro, California. I uh, was spent my first year in Redondo Beach, which is right next to it. Um, and my first breaths were at this hospital, Kaiser Permanente, on Highway 1, uh, Pacific Coast Highway. I used this fact to, uh, to torment people, which is what facts are great for. Uh, specifically, uh, California Highway 1, Pacific Coast Highway, is this entire red line along the coast. So anytime we're on any family vacation or anything that we happen to drive across PCH, I go, hey, did you know that I was born on this street? And it's a great delight in terrorizing my children. Um, so, of course, having this tie to Pacific Coast Highway, I grew up about as far away from it as I could get, which was in this town called Bishop, which is up here. Um, I did most summers actually go down and uh, live with my dad as well in uh, Oceanside, which is uh, down there near San Diego. But the vast majority of my time was in Bishop. Uh, Bishop, if you've never been up there, is a very pretty place. Um, it's a lot like uh, Palm Vale, high desert with snow-covered mountains nearby. Um, mountains are a little bigger. Uh, that's about it. A lovely little picture there of my high school in the snow. Uh, one of the things that Bishop is also kind of famous for, or at least the, the whole valley up there, is whenever Hollywood needs to film something than pretend it's Afghanistan, they always go there. So it's an ongoing joke that if you see a movie and they tell you it's Afghanistan, it, it's basically probably within an hour of where I grew up. Uh, Bishop itself is famous for, of course, mules. Um, yeah, make your own jokes. Um, that's that's the main drag where I hung out all through high school. Um, this is an overview of the entire city. Uh, population of Bishop is 3,800. The number of students at TPAA is 3,500. So um, that should give you, if you imagine that everybody you see on campus, including the kindergartners and all of them, um, they had that we went and we formed our own town. It, it would be the size of Bishop. Uh, the nearest mall to Bishop is the AV Mall. Uh, it's about a three and a half hour drive, and I used to do it pretty much every year for Christmas shopping. Um, from my house now, it's about 20 minutes, and I'm uh, really excited about that, you know, when I can go out. Uh, the weather is usually pretty close to Palmdale. Um, my mom and in-laws still live there, so I still go up occasionally. Um, one of the questions that I often get, or we often get, is how long have I known Mr. Jennings? Uh, and the answer to that question is a very long time. Uh, you will see that right here is me. And right over there is Mr. Jennings. Um, so it's been a while. We didn't really become friends until high school, but uh, when, it, when you both grow up in a town that's that small, you know, you, it just everybody knows everybody. And everybody's business. <laughs> um, so again, to just sort of highlight what a rinky-dink place this is, uh, that's where I grew up, and that's where Mr. Jennings grew up, and that's where my wife grew up. Basically, Mr. Jennings and uh, my wife were pretty much across the street from each other, and uh, I was like one street over. Um, my first job back in my day, you could start working pretty much as soon as you hit 14. So uh, 14, 16, I was at Taco Bell. 
Um, Mr. Jennings was working at a restaurant, you know, quarter mile away, and he was making a lot more than I was, so I switched to work that job, uh, which means that TPAA is the second place that we have worked together. Uh, and then my third job, uh, right before I started college, was at Kmart. During the summers when I was down with my dad, uh, he had a concrete pumping truck, uh, basically a one-person business, and I would go and help work, help him work the construction sites. Uh, so that was pretty much my life growing up. I went to college at the uh, University of California, Irvine, and I was the first person in my family to go. Um, because I was the first person in my family to go, I didn't realize some basic things like, hey, uh, fast food needs to be done every year. Uh, so I did not have any money for my sophomore year and freaked out. And so the summer between freshman and sophomore year of college, I flew to Alaska for my fourth job, a uh, commercial salmon fisherman. I was on a little tiny boat catching tons and tons of salmon every day. Um, that was me on the boat, and this was my uh, luxurious hair when I got back. I went back to college for my sophomore year of college, which was rough. Uh, I made pretty good money in Alaska, but uh, really just enough for tuition and books. So my sophomore year, I was pretty much homeless, um, sleeping on friends' couches, floors, car in the parking lot, uh, that kind of thing. Um, Around this time, my cousin got out of the Air Force and uh, made use of the GI Bill to pay for college. So I thought, hey, that's a good idea. And uh, I joined the Air Force as well. Um, I'll try to speed this up. So I did basic training in San Antonio. Then went to a year of language training in Monterey. Uh, they tried teaching me Vietnamese at first, which is a tonal language. Uh, like Mandarin, quickly realized I'm completely tone deaf and uh, moved me into the Spanish program, which I loved. Um, my Spanish is very strange, though. Uh, because it was taught to me by the military, it tends to focus on military vocab over, like, useful conversational vocab. So I know words like, like rocket and sergeant and other military ranks. Uh, but I don't know words like vest or uh, brother-in-law, stuff like that I am forever needing to look up, um, and I really need to practice my Spanish more. Um, so then I did some tech training in San Angelo, Texas, and then ended up back in San Antonio. I was there three years working uh, military intelligence for the 93rd Intelligence Squadron. I uh, got out, moved to Long Beach, um, pretty much right next to San Pedro where I was born, which is where my wife and I um, dated and where we were living when we got married. Uh, I took a few classes at Cal State Long Beach, and then uh, my wife went to get her credential, credential full-time, and so I started working full-time uh, for the city of Long Beach, which uh, was actually an overall good experience. Uh, so then we moved, after she got her credential, we moved to Moore Park, uh, where we had our first kid, and I went to Cal State Channel Islands and finished my degree and got my teaching credential. My first teaching job was at Huron Middle School. Um, it was, wasn't really a full year. There was a teacher that had actually been hurt, and uh, was basically hospitalized and wasn't going to come back for the year. So it was like a, hey, can you film for this teacher for the rest of the year? Um, which I did. And uh, then I moved on up to Stockton, where I taught at the Weber Institute of Science and Technology and had my second kid. Um, loved that campus, loved that job, but the, uh, the district was huge and they were like, hey, we're just going to move teachers around so you don't get to stay at the science and tech place. And so that was when I started thinking that I wanted to work at a STEM school. But instead, I went back home to Bishop and taught at the middle school that I went to, which was a very weird experience. Um, and then sort of kept my eye open for a good tech school and finally came to TPAA. So that's sort of my path around and how I got here. 
And you're probably wondering, why is this strange man wasting my time? So here's why. Um, in my life, I've had a lot of work experience. Fast food, fine dining, cashier, construction, front office, um, telemarketing, uh, paper delivery, um, pretty much a lot of random stuff. Movie theater, that one was fun. Anyway, tons of work experience. I also have experience at community colleges. Uh, Moore Park Community College, uh, took a couple classes there. I have experience at Cal State colleges. Cal State Long Beach, Cal State Channel Islands. I have experience with the University of California. I got into UC Irvine, went there for a year and a half. Um, I have military experience with the Air Force. Odds are very good that whatever your plans are after graduation, it's going to involve probably one or more of those five things. So if you just want somebody to, hey, what was this like? What was that like? You want an additional person to talk about? I am more than happy to do that. Senior year is a weird time. Um, there's a lot of talk about senioritis, and I think a lot of senioritis is just seniors realizing, oh no, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my rest of my life, and that starts putting high school on a back burner, which can be a huge problem. But also, you do need to be thinking about after high school pretty much all year. So, I also wanted to talk about classroom norms. Uh, if you've not heard the word norms before, they are agreed upon definitions of productive behaviors and mindsets that should be the normal state of things, which is going to be norm. Uh, as sort of general norms, stuff that applies to both students and myself, um, there is going to be some variety based on the class. Um, but if you have ideas as to norms that we should add or adopt, uh, please take some notes and talk to me about those. Uh, first off, we should all aim to be prepared and on time each day. I know that's not always easy. Uh, it might mean that you need to prep or get up earlier than you expect. Because also the other norm is that we need to all understand that there will be delays beyond our control. Um, there are going to be, there very likely will be a day where I am, have something else going on or the internet drops out at wherever I'm happen to be doing online teaching from. Uh, it will either be home or the school, but there seems to be some conflict on that at that point. Um, also you, we, you may have be, you may be tasked with getting a little brother or sister or a cousin or a niece or a nephew online before you start our classes. Um, you might, or I might, be sick. Um, we might have family members we need to care for. There, there's all kinds of delays that might come up over the years, uh, over the course of the year. But we need, we need to understand that those will happen, but also if they be become chronic. If, if you or I or somebody is always underprepared or is always late, that's something that we need to address and figure out a way to fix. And we can definitely do that. Last year we had uh, students who, like I said, were, were making sure their family members were online for their schooling, their, their nieces and nephews. Um, we had students who were hospitalized. We had, you know, students who had major stuff going on, and that's fine. Um, we just need to be on that. We also have to understand that th this is not the best way to learn. It's not the best way to teach, and it's not the best way to do any of this. Uh, there's mountains of research that all says, yeah, this is terrible. Um, and we, we're aware of that, and, and you should be aware of that. Um, so we're going to try to make the best of it, uh, and we are going to do everything we can above and beyond to make sure that you are still getting your education. Um, but for that to work, uh, I'm going to have to do that, and you're going to have to do that. So we will we'll try to stay on that. Uh, for student norms, uh, these are tentative because, like I said, it's a, I do want your input. But the first thing, um, you've got to stay in touch. Um, 
yeah, I, I can I can help you with a lot of things from you know ensuring you have tech to giving you extensions on due dates to all kinds of things. Um, but I, I need to be able to communicate with you for that. So it's very important that you stay in touch. Um, it's also very important to keep graduation requirements in mind. Um, we had two students who really just skin of their teeth graduated this year. Uh, in previous years, I have had students who were not doing their English work and were not passing the class and did not graduate. And it is not a fun thing as a teacher to go, well, so-and-so is not getting a high school diploma because they're not fat. They're not passing my class. That's it's not something I enjoy doing, um, but it's also something that I feel like a moral obligation of. If they have not been doing anything, I, I cannot just give people points. Um, so keep those graduation requirements in mind all year. Uh, third, if you have questions, ask them. One of the biggest problems about this whole distance learning thing is normally. I go, hey, here's what we're doing. Let's talk about this. And I'll sort of wander around and look at people and go, hey, are you getting this? Um, and I can't do that at all. If we're in a Zoom meeting and your particular screen is not one that's easily viewable, I, I'm not going to be able to easily find out if you're, you've understood this. So please ask any questions you have about anything we cover. Um, you're, if, you're probably not going to be the only one, and it's very likely that, hey, um, a lot of the little tricks that I use to teach things are things that I act out, or we, we do visualizing stuff, or we write on the board, and stuff that is not really easy, or in some cases possible at all. Uh, through distance learning. So some of my explanations I, I know are going to be below usual. Um, I'm trying, one of the things I've been working on all summer is trying to figure out ways to improve those. Uh, but I'm sure I have zero experience with this. It's not going to be perfect. So if I don't do a great job of explaining stuff, I really need you guys to ask me about that and to tell me that. Similarly, if you see classmates struggling, tell me about it. If after class a friend says, hey, I didn't really get what they were talking about and you're not 100% sure yourself, please tell me. I will go over it again, try to reword it, come up with better stuff the next class. Um, and five, do as much work as possible. Obviously, 100% would be the goal to do all of the assignments. Again, I know the world may not allow that. Um, you know, uh, again, last year we had a kid who, a student who was in the hospital for like three weeks. Um, that student got behind in their work. We, they stayed in touch. We were all, we were all fine. This wasn't really an issue, but do what you can. Uh, for me, um, I need to stay in touch. Um, I need to make sure that I'm accessible that I'm, I'm there if you email me a question or whatever, uh, that I'm there to answer it. We, I believe our current model, if it stays another month when we start, uh, is uh, to that we'll have some office hours so you can just come and talk. Um, but it is very important to me and I need to remember to uh, be as accessible and in touch with you guys as I can. Um, in addition to that, I need to learn how to use all this tech. Um, this is my first real experience. Um, I'm recording this via Twitch. It may or may not be a good method to do it. I kind of liked the whole that I could put a PowerPoint behind me and yet still you'd still see my face. So it wouldn't just be a voice coming out over the ether while I showed you a PowerPoint. Um, that may work well, it may not. I really don't know. Um, and so I'm going to try a bunch of different techniques and see what works. And uh, we'll figure this out. Um, also, again, I need to understand that multiple factors 
can interfere with your ability to do the work. Uh, if you have, you know, um, if you're sick, if family members are sick, uh, there's uh, all kinds of things that can interfere with student ability to do work. You're, you're basically raising a sibling because your parents are at work. Um, there, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, so I need to, to keep in mind, hey, maybe this person is lazy and not doing their work. And maybe this person is trying to help two nephews and a little sister do online schooling as well, while also doing all the shopping and cooking for the household and is having a nervous breakdown and that's why the work's not being done and not because they're just lazy. Um, and most of all, uh, continue to prepare you for life after high school. Um, whether that's just the language skills we'll be going over, the stuff teaching you how to do some of the skills you'll need in college, and even just how to do online classes. Um, a lot of colleges are going online. I very, very much hope um, that we're not still in this boat next year. Um, I would love for us to have available vaccines or that uh, enough people get into um, social distancing and masks and testing and everything we need to get our numbers down to where it's, it's not as big of a concern. Um, but right now it's a, it's a question mark and uh, we don't know, so we'll try to prepare you for what if your freshman college, year of college is mostly online. Uh, that's a miserable thought, and I would very much like to actually see you all in a classroom at some point. Uh, so hopefully we will, we will get there. Um, finally, I just wanted to say welcome to the 2020-2021 school year. It's going to be really different, um, and uh, we need to focus on what we need to do, and what I need to do, what you need to do. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be different, and we will make the best of it. Uh, but stay safe, stay sane, uh, give help when you can, ask for help when you need it, and uh, I will see you. I believe online. August 11th. I probably should have verified that fact before recording this, but I'm not going to re-record the whole thing now. Anyway, hope you're doing well, and uh, we'll see you at some point.